And I think we are ready for our groundbreakers discussion with the youth who are pioneering the community bio movement. So, so excited and honored to be sharing the Zoom stage with these incredible, inspiring youth. Um, we're gonna dive right in uh, with all of these amazing folks that we have here today. So just to give you a quick heads up, um, you've seen these slides before. We just wanna make sure you're all aware of the code of conduct. Uh, if you have any violations, let one of the people with red backgrounds or any of the organizers know. Um, go ahead and, and mute yourself now if you are able to. And um, we're gonna have an option to let you voice your questions later on, but for now, mute yourself. Uh, you can leave your video on if you want. Uh, Mackenzie is gonna drop the notes document in the chat for you. And we're also collecting attendance there. So if you could just go ahead and add your info so that we know who all has joined us, that would be extremely helpful. And of course, thank you to our sponsors. So without further ado, I'm gonna go ahead and uh, ask Janice to help us out here so that our speakers can in turn unmute themselves and answer our two big questions. So first I'm gonna ask all of our youth panelists today, if you could just introduce yourself, tell us a little bit about what you do in the community bio movement. And then we're gonna have a little bit of time for each of you to talk about your biggest challenges and opportunities that you think are facing youth who wanna join the community or the global bio community. Uh, and then we'll have some time at the end for more of a conversation among all of the audience members and the speakers. But I wanna just let them take it away so that they can share their own voice. So first up, we have Patricia. Patricia, are you in the room and, and ready to roll? Hello, here I am. <laughs> Excellent. Cool, so um, I'm Patricia Ray. I'm 15, I'm in grade 10. I'm from Ontario, Canada. And when I'm not hiding in my lab, I do drawing. Uh, do, go to the next slide. There we go. So um, what I do is I'm a student innovator and a protein engineer. And right now I'm working on a, a synthetic antifreeze protein actin polymer that can be used to help uh, yeast um, survive on Mars. So they can be used as biological factories to produce materials like food and um, pl biodegradable plastic and spider silk to provide for uh, possible colonies. So um, you can see here I, right now I'm, uh, right now I'm uh, working on um, this polymer and it has two parts um an antifreeze protein side that um uh like prevents ice crystals from going growing and uh from growing and uh, it stops uh cells from dying due to extremely cold temperatures and then an actin part and uh, actin is a protein that connects to other actins and sort of creates a chain so stuff like have these two parts of the protein and because actins connect to other actins, it creates like an antifreeze protein conga line. So you can get a bunch of antifreeze proteins interacting with ice crystals at the same time and stopping ice crystal growth. That's what I do in the lab. Other than that, I'm also a uh, CAGIS, um, a, sorry, a CAGIS uh, teen ambassador. And um, CAGIS stands for a Canadian Association for Girls in STEM. And it's like a, an outreach um, uh, organization in Canada for uh, girls and uh, young women in STEM to help them be engaged in science. So I volunteer with them. And then I'm also uh, an, uh, an advisor for the uh, Future Earth Academy, which is something that uh, someone called Jennifer Jones is uh, developing in uh, New York, I think, to uh, create a school that works um, with uh, youth to uh, get them, like, uh, it's a school like centered around genetic engineering and uh, synthetic bio biology to uh, teach youth how to use it as a tool. That's what I'm doing. And should I answer the question, uh, the second question now or later or? Go ahead and save all the questions for the end and make sure that we have enough time to get through all six speakers beforehand. Does that sound good? Okay, yeah. Awesome. All right, thank you, Patricia. Do you have anything more to add? Uh, no, that's it. <laughs> Great. Okay. <laughs> so we'll make sure our chat monitor is holding on to those questions until the end. Please do feel free to ask your questions as we go. But now I'm going to go ahead and pass the buck to Adarsh. Hi. Can everyone hear me? We can hear you loud and clear. Okay. So um, my name is Adarsh Nalapa. So I am a 10th grader in California Bay Area. 
So on top of biology, I also love being a part of the speech and debate team at my school. So my affiliation to This year's camp has changed a little bit due to the pandemic, and um, I'm going to touch on this a little bit. Um, but usually, since we are affiliated with the University of Stanford, uh, last year we had our camp at the Shiram Center um, at Stanford, and we focused a little bit more on empowering teens, uh, girls, um, in like kind of working on basic uh, biomaterials. And um, this year, uh, due to the pandemic, we've decided to go online and um, we have been uh, kind of, we've been focusing more on PPE and um, human-centered design. And uh, Corinne, uh, Corinne of the Tiscara has sent out kits to everyone. So we all got to kind of, um, uh, in the Zoom sessions, we talked a little bit more about how those uh, biomaterials work and everything. And it's a great opportunity, uh, but since the camp was online this year, everyone had a great opportunity from different backgrounds from all over the Bay Area to join in this year, from Oakland to Salinas to San Jose, and they all got to share their ideas and thoughts into this year's camp. And uh, should I answer the question right now? Or? Yeah, you can go ahead now and think about the opportunities facing youth or the challenges facing youth ho hoping to enter the community bio movement. Okay, so uh, this is a little bit of a long one, but I'm gonna start this off with a little story. Um, so at the beginning of this school year in a uh, science class, uh, I decided to run a little science experiment of my own. And uh, we were working on some icebreakers, uh, one which was called Two Truths and a Lie. And the way this works is you have to say three things about um, three things and two of those things were true and one was a lie. And so the three things that I said was that um, I like to play soccer, I'm a good cook, and just to point out, I am not a good cook at all, but I can bake. And the third thing that I said was that I love science and uh, bioengineering. And my peers at this point had ruled out the fact that I play soccer because they knew that I took that um, pretty seriously. And, um, but they kind of had to make an educated guess whether I was a good cook or I love science, science and bioengineering. Um, but it was unanimous and all my peers said that the two truths were that um, I was a good cook and that I played soccer. And I thought to myself why they didn't pick bioengineering. Maybe bioengineering and science wasn't as common for um, people to kind of have interest in that. It wasn't as known to everyone. But um, I'm gonna infuse cooking a little bit into this. So since they picked cooking, cooking is used all around the world. And I think that bioengineering should be kind of like used like cooking. Like it's used all around the world and you could infuse communities and cultures into cooking. Um, but luckily for me, uh, BioJam was an opportunity that I had last year. And when I first came in, I felt a little intimidated. But, but as soon as I, um, Grew from that. This time around, I was a teen mentor helping other people who also might feel um, a little uncomfortable or maybe a little intimidated. But um, why is everyone feeling intimidated? This should feel something that like everyone feels comfortable with to input their ideas and thoughts. And I feel that the bioengineering, biology, biodesign, and science in general is very important because once everyone has access to this, we can find creative ways to solve things like global warming. Amazing. Thank you so much for that is, uh, anecdote, Isabella. That was really a powerful one that I think a lot of people are going to remember for a long time. Uh, so now we're going to head over to Anne to answer the same questions. If you're just trickling in, she's going to introduce herself. So Anne, if you could tell us a little bit about yourself and uh, how you got into community bio, or what you're doing in community bio, and then share your thoughts on the, the opportunities and the challenges facing youth entering community bio today. Thank you for that introduction. So hi everyone, I'm Ann Hu. I'm a senior in high school from the California Bay Area. And in my free time, I like to do photography and other art forms. Next slide, please. So along with Isabella, Emily, and Trisha, I am on the BioJam team as a teen mentor. And I'm just gonna go ahead and elaborate on what Isabella said about BioJam. So the four of us participated in the pilot program of BioJam in 2019. And it was just a week-long summer camp in which we explored 
some concepts of biology, bioengineering, and biomaterial design. And after that camp, we continued our journey by designing public workshops. I'm also on the GIY BioBuddies team with Emily and Trisha. We designed a toy kit that introduces children to sustainable design through growing toys out of the biomaterials, kombucha leather, and mycelium. Um, we participated in the 2019 Biodesign Challenge, and we're still working on developing some more public resources and doing more workshops with our community. And then just as a little side project, not so much with the bioengineering community, but more of the um, sustainability side, I'm working with my sister um, to develop some eco-friendly confetti that we're calling Florfetti. It's just laser cut leaves. So that's a little side project I'm working on. Um, and then to answer the question about greatest opportunities and challenges, I think the greatest opportunity that's out there for youth who want to join the bio community is that there are mentors everywhere. Everyone in the bio community is just so welcoming and so ready to help you if you just ask for help. So I think that is one of the best opportunities that's there for, um, that's there for youth that want to join. But the challenge that I see as the greatest is a limited knowledge of biology. So all we know at this point in our education is biology, cells, environment, global warming, and that's basically our limited knowledge of biology. And there's just so much more out there. Like you get all these amazing branches of bio art and CRISPR, and there's all of these different things that we don't get to learn about at this point in our education. So I believe that that limited knowledge of what's out there in the bio community is one of the greatest challenges for youth. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Really informative to hear about your, your thoughts on the challenges and opportunities. I'm sensing some themes that we'll get to in the, in the Q&A. But for now, I want to hand it off to Trisha, whom, as we know from Anne, is also part of the BioBuddies crew, BioJam crew. Um, so I'm also a part of BioJam, as um, both Anne and Isabel mentioned. Um, this year, however, it had to transition to an online format. So we were team mentors, um, like providing peer support. We were facilitating creative conversations about technology and biomaterials. And we were also just there to like be people that they can come to advice for because all these students are the same, about the same age as us. And recently, um, a community outreach project that we did through BioGym was um, this airport, the San Jose Airport art installation. And it was a collective poster kind of just describing, um, not describing, but we, we each contributed a mask kind of showing our self-care practices during quarantine. And this will actually be displayed in the San Jose Airport. So that's pretty exciting. <laughs> and then um, as a part of GOI BioBuddies with um, Emily and Anne, We've been working together to you know, develop the kit, but I also want to emphasize that community outreach is a pretty big part of our whole like bio buddies principle or idea. And we're doing this by um, conducting, we did this by conducting workshops before, and we also have online resources on our website to just try and spread biomaterial design to people of all ages. And as for the question for opportunities and challenges, I think for challenges, um, I would definitely say that there is this fear of biology and kind of saying that like biology is separate from a lot of other fields, at least that's kind of how it was like for me. Because when I was younger, and I mean, when I was a little bit younger, I would kind of separately identify biology as science and then art as art. And I didn't really see the connection between the two. But obviously through engaging with um, biodesign and biomaterial sciences, I've realized that, you know, science is not just about like one specific thing. You can incorporate like tech, art, pretty much anything into it. And I think that's pretty, you can see that throughout the um, people coming in and out of the Global Bio Community Summit, which I got to see last year and this year as well. But yeah. <laughs> Amazing. I love hearing about your um, self-care masks. That's a really beautiful concept and a, a needed one, I think, in this global moment. Uh, do you want to share, while we have a little bit of time left in your session, to talk about what your self-care was that you drew on your mask? Yeah, of course. Um, I don't think you can really see it, but mine's is the second one on the last row, but I kind of just talked to, uh, it's somewhere there, <laughs> but I kind of just talked about um, I like try to show that I've been watching a little bit more TV by kind of 
incorporating like these disc patterns from um, like Indian pattern pants. And then I also put like some, I also cut out a bit of rice bags like onto the mask as um, like eating um, this rice porridge is like a good way to kind of recover yourself if you're sick. And that was kind of like, like my Indian culture was kind of like um, the overall like element in that mask. But yeah, we, most of us kind of connected culture and um, just our interests in the masks that we were um, displaying. I love that culture as self-care. Uh, maybe we'll circle back to that theme in the Q&A as well. So now, uh, thank you so much, Trisha. Uh, we have Emily to tell us about her experience in the bio community movement and her ideas about the opportunities and challenges therein. So Emily, go ahead and take it away. Yeah, thank you. So I'm another high school junior and I'm also in the California Bay Area in the US. And um, for my hobby, I would say something that kind of epitomizes my like love for making and design is um, Halloween costume making, <laughs> which get pretty elaborate for me. <laughs> Can you go to the next slide? Thank you. Okay. Um, and then I'm also a part, oh, I've also been a part of the BioJam team from 2019 and 2020, and then also Joe Bio Buddies. And so more on BioJam, kind of as Trisha touched on, the main like key focus has been on community engagement and outreach. So as both in 2019 and 2020, we explored like biomaterials and applications a focus was how can each of us bring that to our communities and in like local um, situations and programs uh, how can we bring that back and be able to share the knowledge through teen voices that are local so for example in 2019 we did some projects at local museums such as the tech interactive in san jose um, about kind of the potent, like bringing awareness to the potential of mealworms and the plastic problem um, and their ability to digest polystyrene. And then also we did a presentation at Construct 3D of um, another collaborative art piece we did called Myco Quilts. Um, and then for this 2020 program where the four of us have been team mentors, um, yeah, there's been a focus on PPE um, and bringing kind of the knowledge and information uh, we can share about like safety measures um, to the participants communities which are um, like around the Bay Area and um, we are the one we're looking at now is PPE distribution for farm workers in Salinas um, and through this it's definitely a focus on leadership for each of the teens um, and being able to develop um, these programs and lead it. Um, and then for that second question, I would say um, a challenge is that transition, I guess, from what we would think of as our traditional schooling of kind of there's an agenda to get to a certain point and a certain curriculum. But um, in like, I think in all of our projects, it's definitely more um, personally driven and um, individually focused where we're incorporating our own interests and um, focus on our community. So it can be kind of hard for those starting to, I guess, have confidence in having a voice and like power in it because you're so used to being, I guess, fully guided. Amazing. A lot of great thoughts there. Um, and we're already starting to see a lot of excitement in the chat about our Q&A. Really quickly, uh, I, we realized that one of our pre uh, presenters didn't get a chance to share about the uh, opportunities and challenges that she notices in this movement for youth. So I'm going to go ahead and back up to Patricia. If you want to um, just remind us of your... Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. So this is Patricia. She was our first panelist. If you came in the room a little late, so do you want to take a, take that a stab at that question? What are the opportunities and the challenges facing youth who would enter the community bio movement? Yeah, um, I know for me, a big challenge getting in was um, actually understanding what 
community bio and genetic engineering and all these things were because there's a lot of papers and there's a lot of material out there for like if you're in university like there's a lot of material out there that you'll understand and it's very easy to bridge over but if you know nothing or not nothing but like if you only know what like the schools like teach you and especially like with like elementary elementary school and high school if you only have that knowledge you can't get in and it's a big barrier and the only reason i was actually sort of able to get in was because i found a mentor and they were e e and they were able to teach me what i needed to know and now i'm able to understand all that information but there's there is absolutely like no in between to mm -hmm. transition from one place to another to be able to sort of bridge that gap as well um people don't really know at least like people like my my peers like in my school for example don't know a lot about biotech they don't really know it's even a possibility like they'll be like oh yeah people do genetic engineering but that's like people with phds in like top labs those are the only people that do that and that's not those are not the only people who do this but it kind of feels like that's the perception and the idea that someone can do this in their house, in their basement, without any university experience, without any formal education or what's considered a formal lab space, which like formal lab space is kind of a weird concept because it's like, what is a lab space? But it's like the idea that you can do this not in a professional lab without like a professional degree or whatever in it is kind of alien. Awesome. Yeah, I think that you have touched on a lot of the issues. The chat is going wild right now with people agreeing with your points. Uh, so I'm just going to take a moment to let us pop back over to our Q&A. And just to give you a brief reminder, I'm going to turn off this share. But just as a reminder, these are all of our panelists. Maybe we can just take a moment to uh, acknowledge our, our gratitude to these panelists. You guys can are amazing. Thank you so much for just being here, taking a, a stand, taking a voice. We really, really appreciate hearing from you because this is a room full of people who want to reach learners like you. So thank you guys so, so much for speaking so confidently about, about your work. Uh, and now I'm going to go ahead and stop the share. And if you guys want to all turn yourselves to gallery view, Janice, if you are able to hear me, this would be a great time to allow all participants to unmute themselves so that we can go ahead and open it up to conversation. Uh, and while people are figuring that out, getting themselves ready to unmute themselves, some really great questions came up in the chat that we can start talking about right now. Um, a lot of you guys already mentioned this, but one of the questions that kept coming up is how do we reach other kids like you, other scientists like you? How do we make sure that these spaces are inclusive? Someone asked how you met your mentor, if mentorship seems to be the theme there, uh, or what, what are other ways that we can sort of help bridge the gap between what's known and what's actually done <laughs> in the bio community movement? You guys want to go ahead and take a minute while all of our attendees type their questions in the chat? Uh, yeah, um, I guess I'll start first. Um, so <laughs> I met my mentor, um, like, at the way I, I guess this sort of connects to how I got into community bio. Like I got, like, I moved schools and my new school had a mandatory science fair you had to do. So there, so I had to come up with a science fair project. And I went, hey, what about, what if I just order like a CRISPR kit and try genetic engineering using CRISPR without knowing anything. So, so after some convincing, I was able to get my dad to let me order the kit to do the project. And I did the project. And after I did the project, my dad said to me, hey, do you want to continue doing this? And I was like, yeah. So I was able to, um, like me and my dad started doing research on people like who could tutor me. And we found uh, Dr. Justin Pahara from Amino Labs who um, I first uh, started editing a book for him, uh, Zero Genetic Engineering Hero, which kind of helped to bridge the gap for me knowledge wise. But after like the book editing was done, he just sort of stayed my mentor and he's still my mentor after like a good three years, I think. Amazing. 
<laughs> wow. Okay. So, so one example of mentorship that kind of just came about through maybe even a family connection and curiosity. Uh, do the rest of the panelists have a similar story of how you got connected with your mentor or, or how you maybe even entered this community bio movement? Um, I think I can talk a little bit about that. Uh, it was honestly, I think it was a little bit by luck because um, my mentor as well as Anne and Isabella is Corinne Takara, who is um, Emily's mom. And um, I think it just started off by like, none of us knew anything about bio design or biomaterial sciences. And we were just like, okay, let's just enter the bio design challenge. Let's just do it because we're all interested in art and we're all kind of interested in, no, we're all interested in nature. So we kind of just took those two ideas and just kind of delved into the world of bio design. But Anne, Emily, Isabella, you can add on to that if you want. Yeah, okay. yeah, definitely. So I think kind of a theme through like um, Trisha and Anne are bio buddies experience and then um, also Isabella in BioJam um, has been kind of a collaborative experience instead of like guidance based because so in 2019 and we were participants and then in 2020 as mentors um, it was definitely like um, a community that was kind of based on communication and collaboration rather than like certain individuals leading the way, I guess. Yeah. Something that plagues academia at all levels, I think. Um, I heard in the chat one question that I'm actually really curious to hear from, from any of you. For teens, how do you talk to your friends about your work and do they get it? Do they wanna do it? What's, what's, the, what's the temperature there? I can start with that one. Um, so I do try to talk to my friends about what I do and it's nice because they're all really supportive about it. I get um, my friends checking in every once in a while asking about did you get bio buddies up and running as the product and like not yet but it's nice um, if you for in my experience when I talk to my friends they'll engage and they'll want to learn more about what I'm doing. Um, I'm not sure if I can speak to the more lab-based research part of that um, but in my experience, if you talk to peers, classmates, friends, they're going to want to learn more. Is that everyone's experience? Um, I kind of have somewhat that experience. For me, I found like when I first started doing it, people were definitely interested in what I was doing. And like my friends are definitely interested and they'll check in every now and then just to see how things are going. Other than that, I don't really talk to them about it at all. Um, they don't really know a lot about what I do. They kind of know the basics. They know I'm working on space yeast and that it has something to do with antifreeze proteins, but that's about it. I don't really talk to them about the science of it that much. And I know there are some friends who I kind of have not mentioned it to, and somehow they haven't realized, but I don't really mention it that much. Interesting. Uh, yeah, um, I, I agree with Patricia. Um, I mean, sometimes, yeah, I tell them that I'm a part of BioJam, that like I'm a team mentor and we work with like biomaterials and such. But um, as I feel for me, like they don't really seem as interested. It's kind of just something that where they're like support me in, but they don't really uh, bring it up that much. So that's my experience at least. That's really interesting. I'm curious, do you, I heard you say, we don't talk about it that much. Is that, is there any particular reason for that? And while you guys are answering, I just want to shout out to the audience. If you want to just throw up your hand in an emoji reaction, I'm going to do a reaction right now. Um, you can go ahead and let me know that you'd like me to call on you for an actual question. Um, but yeah, if you guys want to take a stab at that question, why don't you talk about your work? I'm just curious. There's no, no judgment there. <laughs> um, it's like, there's a bit of a disconnect. I think it's hard to describe. It's like, I do like, I do this research and I have a lab in my basement and I go to competitions with it. And I guess, um, like first they don't really ask about it that much. I don't know if they actually are interested in it. I know when I start talking about my work, 
like, if you get me going, I can just keep rambling and rambling and I don't stop and I don't want to be annoying. But also, like, I don't want to alienate them and I don't want it to get in the way of the friendship. It's like, mm. it's, it feels like I'm bringing up something that is, isn't of interest, but also, like, can kind of act as a barrier because it's, in one way, it's just another one of my interests, and in another way, it feels kind of different because it's something I work on all the time, and it just feels like more of a barrier that can make it harder for us to bond. Amazing. Um, so, you know, at the heart of things, you guys are still teens dealing with all the same stuff that teens deal with, right? There are social considerations there. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, so I actually have Craig on deck, who's ready to ask you a question in his own voice. So Craig, are you unmuted already? Yep. Uh, all right, first, go ahead. first thing I want to say, incredible work presenting all you've done. It's so inspiring to see such amazing youths getting engaged in biology. Um, a lot of my personal journey in community biology has been around education, especially working with middle and high school. Um, you know, teaching about mycology, bringing those students onto an iGEM team, going to the giant jamboree, students that never would have the opportunity. And one of them actually admitted me, Craig, like that engagement really changed my perspective about what I want to do in my life. So I think about how those students that had this whole journey from iGEM to just beginning, like maybe heard about a program from like a mentor in school who just maybe just pushed them to check it out, you know, just to try it out, to explore, realize there's more in the world. What are certain things that would you say were like, one, critical points that really help connect you for that journey. And also two, what are ways do you think you can kind of share that engagement with your peers who may be kind of blase about it, or may not just get it, who, however, if they see something that may turn on a light bulb and, you know, create a lighthouse in the horizon, they're willing to build a bridge to. So what are those kind of concepts you see where those pivotal points in your journey, uh, but also two other ways that you can kind of inspire that pivotal point for your peers as well, or the next generation? So with my experience, with the reason I joined BioCurious and just entered this community as a whole is just I had friends who were like, who saw this. And I think it almost just spreads like that. Like when people are willing to have the conversation or spend time to learn about what our friends are interested in, you learn about so many more opportunities. Like my life would definitely be a lot different if my friend didn't tell me about this. I didn't decide to show up and all of those things. So I think just being comfortable with conversation like maybe not going into the science because obviously that's complicated. Just like there are these wonderful opportunities out there. There are so many like super smart adults who are willing to talk to you and mentor to you and so many opportunities. And I think like someone in the chat mentioned something about the science fair and all of, I think the science fair is a great, like a great, another way to where people learn a lot about, a lot about community labs and that kind of stuff. But I think just um, with my experience, teachers don't do that much for like telling kids what they can do outside of school um i know they're like a lot of them are like busy and there's a lot of struggles to being a teacher but my experience it's mostly just people our age or maybe our parents just reaching out to people i haven't really seen too many teachers just being like there are these wonderful opportunities out there but i think if teachers did that more we'd have a lot more like youth participation Anyone else want to take a pass at Craig's question before we move on to Kevin? Or anyone want to volunteer anything about science fairs? That was actually another question raised in the chat. I actually compete in science fairs a lot. That's kind of a thing that I do. I think that science fairs are really great. Um, they, the, like, I know they have like rubrics and rubrics and stuff, but the rubric, it isn't like normal rubrics you get in school, which are just painful. It actually, like, the, the only requirements on the rubric to get a level four or whatever, like, the grade is, it's, like, the basic things that you'd want to have in any scientific experiment or innovation, where it's just, like, have you done testing? Are, it, have you done stuff to make sure your evidence is solid? Are you explaining this correctly? Have you done research? Do you, do you kind of know what you're doing? Which is really solid in the experience of the fair itself is also really good because it's a space and like one of the only spaces I think that I've been in where I'm not treated as a student but where I'm treated as a peer who has done research which is really important because I find like sometimes I'll walk into a space 
or even like, and it, it ends up, and the message like that I'll get is you're a student who's like a, a kid doing science. And it's put in that really like, you're a kid doing science kind of way. And it's not a, you're doing research that's important and we respect that. And you really like learn how to talk like on an equal level with like experts in your field and you learn how to properly present a thesis and like, it's like practice for defending a thesis and it gives you opportunities. I think maybe making fairs better is having equal judging because I find like with the Canada wide science fair that I've competed at, like it's weird because like they have like, I know they'll have, um, they have, they have different aisles. Like they'll have the innovation aisle, the medical aisle, like all these different aisles for like different types of projects. And like, it's weird because sometimes you'll see one project in one aisle and that is a bio biotech project will get like three judges that are all in biology, but another biotech project in say the discovery aisle or the research aisle will get like one biology judge, one engineering judge and one like physics judge. And they don't have regulations on what kind of judges you get. And I don't know if it's influenced by the aisle you're in, but having equal judging is an important thing because sometimes judges from other areas can look at a project and go, this is way more impressive than it actually is, or this is way less impressive than it actually is, and they can't judge it properly. Yeah, I think someone in the chat also mentioned the limitations of your educators not having all the same information that you guys have. I mean, if, in effect, you're kind of experts um, compared to a lot of the people that you work with. And that's going to continue being the case. That's how science is in the real world. So uh, that's a good point to call out now. How to identify the folks who can evaluate your work uh, in an efficient way. Uh, so I know we haven't forgotten Kevin, who I hope is able to unmute himself right now. Yeah, I think so. You can hear me. Awesome. We can hear you. Yeah. Do you want to go ahead and ask your question to the group? Yeah. So uh, super nice discussion. Um, and it's interesting to hear you guys talk about you know, your own circles of friends and how you communicate with them. Um, I wanted to ask, uh, if like flip the question around maybe a bit where like, how do you keep in touch with, uh, each other, uh, or with other, like, you know, teens who are interested in biosciences, um, uh, or do you, have you thought about like, you know, reaching out there or is it just something that you feel like you, you don't spend time that much on trying to find like other, I guess, uh, younger folk that are, that are keen on bioengineering and stuff. And while you collect your thoughts, I want to piggyback on this because in the chat we saw Esther was asking, are there specific social media outlets you guys are using that like we dinosaurs don't know about or <laughs> hashtags we should check? <laughs> so you guys can sort of take your time and answer that. So with my experience about like reaching out to other teen people or other teen people working in biology, I think our lab is really good at that because we have this like program called like Teens Teaching Teens where like older, older like high school students can talk to like middle schoolers or other middle schoolers or other younger high schoolers about all this, all the projects they've been working on, just reaching out to people. And like we talk about like bioinformatics and PCR and CRISPR and all of those things. And I think that's a great way for just reaching out to people knowing that it's an approachable subject and that just to everyone interacting and talking about their experiences. And then I know with like the personal project I started, I do, I do that with a friend and I think just reaching out to people because it's really cool stuff that we're doing. Like if you tell someone on the street, like, oh, we're literally like, we can change the DNA in your cells to make you immune to a disease. They're like, wow, and people are interested in that. And if you tell them you can do this as a high schooler with no degree, no any of that, just come to our lab and we can talk about it. It's just really cool just reaching out to more people like that. I love um, that. You're right, it is cool stuff that you're doing. <laughs> Trisha, you wanna go ahead? Yeah, um, kind of just adding on, I think um, through BioJam last year and this year, we were able to meet a lot of, all the students are like teens that are the same age as us so we were able to meet them and kind of form connections because we have like monthly weekly monthly meetings but then also um last year at the bio summit um and emily and i met a bunch of other teens including patricia and then a couple of other people so it's been nice like kind of like i think we like follow each other on instagram through our GOI bio buddies account but we all kind of 
try to stay connected, but I think there could be like more effort done in trying to kind of create like more programs to connect teens to other teens because I feel like it's a lot of it's always like teens to adults, which is not a bad thing, but it would be nice to know a lot of um, people with like simpler like, ages and interests, I guess. Awesome. I want to make sure we have time for our last question from Yoshi. Uh, are you able to unmute yourself, Yoshi? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Awesome. Okay. Um, so I just want to give a, another shout out to all of you guys. You guys are awesome. And I think that the most inspirational thing for kids and students are other kids and students, because it makes it very real that I can do this, right? So I just want to shout out to all of you guys. Um, I'm really interested in hearing your thoughts about what made it click for you guys. So I've tried to help out so many high schoolers over the years on getting inspired by science. And again, not everybody's going to be inspired by science. That's fine, right? But among the people who are really interested in getting into biotech, some of them it clicks and some of them it doesn't. Sometimes it's a good mentor. Sometimes it's good educational material that they're given. Sometimes it's a good project that they're really interested in. So what do you guys think is the most important? What's, is it a important mentor that really makes or breaks your experience? Is it a really stable project or is it really learning material that you're, you were exposed to? Or something else, a community or something. Or something else. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, or something else. So since we have about uh, one or two more minutes left in this session, this is, I'm asking you guys on the, on the fly here. We didn't, we didn't practice this, but do you think we could go maybe uh, each of you gets a turn to answer and try to keep it like, like a tweet level short? Okay, uh, I saw a thumbs up from Adarsh. Should I go ahead and put you on the hot seat first? Oh uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> so for me, I think it was a mentor. There's uh, like an er Eric Espinosa, who's our mentor at our lab. I think he has a PhD in biochemistry from Stanford. It's just the level of patience he had in teaching us. Like as students, we made so many mistakes. Like we've screwed up so many projects, but just knowing that there are people out there who have so much patience willing to teach us. And then like, like I think having an amazing mentor for me was was the biggest thing that made it click for me that there are so many people willing to teach me. And that's what made me really interested. Like I want to be part of this community and I also want to teach others just like he taught me. So that's what it clicked for me. Thank you, Adarsh. Okay, challenge to the next person. Half that time, Isabella. Um, so uh, last year, I know that when we were working on like um, pressing mycelium into mold forms, like vacuum sealing plastic to press mold forms, we kind of got to um, design our own, like uh, design something that was related, connected to you like um, uh, through community or like culture. So like I made a concha that's like a Mexican pastry mm -hmm. and I 3D printed that and that's what I made as my mold form, but like others got to um, connect with their communities in that way. And I felt that that's pretty important. And that's how we also engaged uh, some of our campers this year. Amazing. Thank you, Isabella. Community and culture. I love it. Who's ready to go next in our last like 45 seconds? Patricia. For me, it was the freedom to be able to do whatever I want and take a project and take it wherever I want it to go and go down whatever rabbit holes I want to go down and without like restrictions, because that really allowed me to sort of use my imagination and also just enjoy it a lot more. Okay, so the freedom was important to you to just sort of follow your creativity. Awesome. How about we have three bio buddy teammates left. Yeah, Anne? For me specifically, it was connecting to environmental sustainability and like being empowered to do something to help with climate change. But um, more in general, I feel like it helps when you have not only a good mentor, but also a good balance of learning material and applying that in projects. Amazing. These are really good answers, you guys. We should put you on the spot more often. Uh, all right, so who's next, Trisha or Emily? Emily, you wanna go? Okay, yeah, I would say um, it was like an overall experience of kind of owning the materials and not seeing biology as like an isolated subject and being able to think of it in context of like my own community um, and my own interests. I love that, thinking of how biology relates to you and everyone you engage with. Awesome, and Trisha, you wanna take us to the end of the session? Yeah, um, I agree with 
what like pretty much everyone said but another thing is kind of doing it as like a group um being with like your friends and doing with your friends was really important because all of the meetings we had weren't like tiring they were just i was looking forward to you know going and doing whatever we were doing with biomaterials that day so i think um, having good friends is important a good community awesome okay well guys we're at time we're over time I, I hope it was worth it for you it was worth it for me if everyone can take yourselves off chat now i think we should go ahead and give these guys a big round of applause for all the hard work they've put into this thank you guys so much you are future your rock stars um if oh i'm gonna go ahead and share their contact information but you should definitely find these guys on the slack they're here all weekend oops that's not the right thing <laughs> Um, and their emails are coming up momentarily. Nope, it doesn't like to share that. I don't know why. I will put them in the chat. Okay, thanks so much, everyone. <laughs>